Hi guys, it's Dana here. Um, I am ready to show you all how to make these lovely milkweed greenhouses um, out of just a milk jug and some soil and of course milkweed seeds. So first I'm gonna tell you all the things that you need in order to do this. Um, the most important thing is to have a milk jug. Here we are. The milk jug has to be translucent. So um, unfortunately the yellow ones we have here in East Tennessee or the um, white ones that we get, those ones won't work, won't let the, enough sunlight through. So you need a clear one. Um, Milo's Tea is a really good place to get one. I got this one at home, it's a Kemp's. Yay. So um, start with that. Uh, I also have a knife and scissors to open the milk jug up. I have water. I use distilled water, but tap water is fine. I try to avoid chlorine because um, that's hard on the plants. But in this case, um, the chlorine probably won't make a difference. It was just easier to bring a bottle in for me. Um, of course, we need soil. I have some miracle Grow here, but any potting soil will really work. So just needs a growth medium and um, a little cup to get the soil out. And of course, well, okay, here, tape. Tape is also needed. Um, but milkweed seeds, that's kind of the most important, right? Because we're planting milkweed seeds. So I, of course, have mine from up at the cabin. Um, here's a whole bunch of them down here, milkweed seeds. I also have pods, um, but I won't be using those today because they're a little bit too messy to be inside. It's freezing outside, even here in Tennessee. Um, and I would only recommend doing any pods outside because of all the fluff. So if you bought or got milkweed seed from me, you may have also gotten some um, wildflower mix. I won't be using that today because uh, this will be best just direct sown into the soil in the spring. So wherever you plan on transplanting your milkweed, I would just keep these and then spread this amongst that in the spring once the threat of, um, of frost has gone away. Okay, let's get started. So first thing we need to do, this one's a finished one. Um, first thing we need to do is cut a milk jug open. So I have my milk jug here. What I usually do is I keep this area around the handle intact and that becomes the hinge. So what I'm gonna show you here is, I'm gonna put this down a little bit. What I'm gonna show you is using a sharp knife. Um, in this case, it's my Oppenel. I love those knives. I am going to start the opening. So here's the handle. I just go a little bit away from the handle. Okay. I'm gonna try to angle this down even further. Okay, don't let me. Okay. So I'm going to just poke in. See how cleanly that one goes in? That's the only knife cut I'm gonna make. Um, mainly because I'm a little bit clumsy with knives. So let's close this guy up. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I will cut this guy open, just like this. So see, I'm starting to cut away from the handle. So I'm gonna cut it straight across and all the way around so that it opens up in half. Of course, my milk jug was cleaned out. We don't want dirty milk jugs. Um, so I cleaned it out right after we used it. And there we go, we have an open milk jug. Um, the bottom will become our base where the soil goes and then the top will become the greenhouse. Uh, we'll actually take the top off, that's really important um, as we get into this. So I just leave it on for now. So here we are, we have our lovely greenhouse. I like to make sure it's open enough so that it sits nicely. It's not really doing that. There we go. Okay. That's a good start. Okay. Next up, we need some soil. So um, I have my milk miracle grow here or whatever you want to use. And I will just start scooping it in like this. Easy peasy. And this can get messy. Um, if you have kids helping you, you might want to make sure you're over a surface that can be cleaned. 
or you're outside, that would be ideal, but you know, I've become kind of a wussy since I moved to Tennessee and I like to be inside on days like today. All right. So I fill up almost all of the bottom. Um, there we go. It doesn't matter really how deep it is because for these, um, we're mostly going to be transplanting them um, pretty soon after you see them emerge. Uh, otherwise, their stems aren't going to get strong enough. So um, you just need enough so that it can the seeds can start. So this step is pretty important. Sometimes people forget it. Um, the next thing you need to do is add some water. So this uh, particular potting mix is actually pretty um, pretty moist already. So I would just add about a third of this bottle into there. Yeah, that's all you need, just a little bit. And then I just mix it around. I don't even get to the bottom. I just wanna have enough moisture in there so that when the seeds come in contact with it, they will, um, they'll get moistened and the whole process will start for them. So I've just mixed that around and of course things got a little bit messy here. So um, I do have a towel somewhere. Where did you go? Oh, it's right here. Found it. <laughs> so I just keep a little wet towel right with me so I don't have to walk in and out of the kitchen. Um, if you're in the kitchen doing this, which is another really good spot to do it, uh, you can just simply rinse your hands. No big deal. Um, so once you have the soil moistened, just take your seeds right here. Uh, I over seed my milk jug um, greenhouses, with, especially with milkweed seed. Milkweed seed for me, especially when it's gathered um, from the wild, it doesn't necessarily have the best germination rate. So, um, and they germinate at different times. You just have to be patient. But the way I figure is if I put on a whole bunch of seeds, um, I'll get I'll get some that germinate, hopefully. And what I actually found last year with this is um, I pulled out some starts and then I left this intact and I was still getting starts throughout the season. So as you can see, I, I poured a whole bunch in here. Um, I would probably say at least 25. So if you got a 50 seed packet, you'd be able to do two of these milk jugs is kind of about what I estimate. So about 25 per milk jug if you're counting. If you're spreading, it kind of just looks like this. Here, I'll bring it a little closer. That's a nice photo. So this isn't done. Um, I make sure that the seeds get good contact with the soil. So I just go ahead and um, kind of press them in a little bit. It's just kind of how I've always done things. I uh, This doesn't get them too deep. They probably want to be about a quarter of an inch under soil. Um, and these guys aren't fussy about that, in my opinion. They kind of just need some contact with soil to protect them um, and to get them started. So kind of just do that. So you can see there's still some there. So I just take a little bit of a cup of soil and I sprinkle it back on and then it completely covers them. And I don't worry about this being moist. It'll all even out over time. It won't take very long. But as you can see, I do not have any visible seeds on there anymore, but they aren't buried deeply. They need to be close to the surface um, in order to germinate. So again, my fingers are a little bit dirty, no big deal. I don't like to use garden gloves for this because uh, I like to have the dexterity of really touching the soil and seeing what the seeds are doing. So at this point, you have created your seed starting medium um, and this is ready to be closed up. So all we have to do is close it like this and then tape it up. So that's what I'm gonna do. And any tape will do. Um, the sunlight isn't penetrating through the sides as much as it is the top. So the important thing here is just making sure you get a good seal. Otherwise the, um, you know, you won't get that good greenhouse effect. So I just, I'm gonna unroll the tape here, cut it off. Here we go, a nice long piece. I like this brown packaging tape. I don't know what it is about it. I feel like I can see where it's going, 
um, but it's not as thick as uh, as duct tape. So just, I, I, I prefer it, but that doesn't mean it's the only way to go. Um, and if you're doing this with other seeds, so I've seen people want to start like lettuces and things like that, you might want to write the name of the seed on the side. Otherwise, you're not going to know what it is. Um, but here, I'll bring this back up. <laughs> so you have finished planting your uh, milkweed seeds in this milk jug. And next, all you need to do is find a sunny spot outside. So you don't want it to be in the shade. You want it to get direct sun. It's okay if it is in a snowbank for my Wisconsin and Northern friends. Um, that'll actually help insulate it from extreme cold. Uh, but we, you want to get this out there so that it's getting sunlight. And it is being exposed to the winter temperatures because the milkweed seeds have to be stratified. And that's just a fancy word for saying um, exposed to winter weather for long periods of time. My seeds and the ones that, if you've gotten them from me, they are not pre-stratified. So some people do something where they put them in the refrigerator for about a month before they plant them. And then you can direct um, sow them into any garden at any time. But uh, this method allows for that natural winter stratification. And I think um, my rule of thumb is it's nice to do it by mid, uh, mid January. So by um, Martin Luther King Day, do the work and put them into the milk jugs. But if you don't get to them until mid-February, I think you're still good to go. It all depends upon temperatures and things, but um, you know, give it a shot. There's not a lot to lose there if you end up being behind in this process. So put your milk jugs together, let your seeds get a chance to start. And then in the spring, once I get sprouts, I will show you guys what to do with those. So thanks so much for joining me and I really hope your milkweed seeds grow and if you need more milkweed seeds, let me know, okay? All right, bye guys. <laughs>